Blessings, liturgy scholars. This is Father Pete Jankowski from St. Patrick's Church on our last of our 10 episode series on liturgy and the prayer life of the Catholic Church. We have just covered the liturgy of the Word from cleansing our sins at the penitential rite to listening to the Word of God, the Old Testament being fulfilled by the New Testament and the Gospel and then the priest preaching the Word of God followed by this creed of the church that has been with us for almost 2,000 years followed by our petitions, our petitions asking to God help the sick and the needy in our church and our community. After the petitions of Mass, we enter the, the liturgy of the Eucharist. The liturgy of the Eucharist is where we celebrate the second major part of the Jewish ritual, sharing a meal together, coming together around a table. And the liturgy of the Eucharist begins with what is called a presentation of gifts. Gifts that have been given to us by God, presented on this altar. Simple gifts of unleavened bread and wine that Jesus through the priest is going to change into his body and blood. So what I did is I set up our altar for the liturgy of the Eucharist. Notice the altar is covered with a cloth to represent purity. And then a priest takes his chalice that is covered by a chalice veil in some churches. And then he places on the altar what is called a corporal, which uh, collects any fragments that might be left on the altar. And then this is called a pall, P-A-L-L, which is the covering, which you use either for a casket at a funeral or you use at mass. This is called a ciborium. A ciborium is where we place the hosts that are presented at mass. And then this is called a purificator, which is used to purify or cleanse the chalice after it is used. And then there's a chalice and the chalice usually has to be lined with some type of metal uh, to show respect for the wine that is going to be changed into the blood of Christ. Other items that are used at the Liturgy of the Eucharist, this is called a water cruet, this is called a wine cruet, and then this is called a finger bowl and a finger towel, which is used, you guessed it, to cleanse the fingers of the priest at Mass. So the way this works is the gifts are brought up to the altar of bread and wine. The priest then says customary prayers, Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, this wine we offer you. After he's presented these gifts to God, he takes this water and he uses a prayer given to us by St. Athanasius uh, back in the fourth century. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. After the priest has presented these gifts to God, in preparation for what he's about to do, he offers what's called a cultural ritual washing, where he takes the water, pours it over his fingers, Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Just like you, priest has to wash his hands before he comes to the table to celebrate this Mass. He offers a special prayer of thanks to what we have received. And then we enter what is called the high point of the liturgy, the, uh, the Eucharistic prayer. Different parts of this Eucharistic prayer, uh, asking God to descend upon this bread and wine, to turn it into the body and blood of Christ, where a celebrant offers prayers for the church and for the sick and for the dying and for the dead. Uh, at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, after all these different parts have been laid out, comes at the high point of the Mass. Yeah. The high point of the Mass is where the priest, this is just a host, this is not the body of Christ, the priest takes the body and blood of Christ and he presents it to the people who are kneeling in adoration and he says those words through him, with him, in him. O God Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now there are two parts of the Mass that really should be sung if possible. The Gospel acclamation and the great Amen after that doxology which says yes this is the body and blood of Christ. Amen. Following the Eucharistic prayer we have the prayer of the Our Father, the words the Lord has taught us. We usually have a customary sign of peace 
after which the priest prepares the body and blood of Christ to be distributed to the people where we sing a Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Jesus is the new Lamb of God. This is the last sacrifice we'll ever need. We do not need to sacrifice lambs or any other animals because Jesus is the Lamb of God who suffered and died for us on that cross. The priest takes the body and blood, he consumes it, and he presents it to the people. He presents it to the faithful in the congregation. At that time, the people in prayer take time to thank God for the gift that they have received. So the celebrant offers his closing prayer, at which time we receive the final blessing from God and the priest or the bishop representing Christ, Christ working through the priest to the bishop, leads the people out of church. Did you know that Christ is present four ways in the Mass? He is present in the Word, He is present in the sacrament, He is present through the celebrant, He is present through the people. Christ, through the priest, is leading the people out of church where they are to take this gift and share it with the world, share Christ's example. I want to thank all of you for joining us for these 10 sessions. May God bless everything that you do and wherever you are, please know you are always in my thoughts and prayers. God bless.